If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about fluoride. So fluoride is derived from fluorine and this particular element has an atomic number of 9 and it is so unstable that it never exists alone. So it is always in combined state and that combined state is fluoride. So fluorine is in the form of fluoride and the word fluorine is derived from the latin word which is fluor here you can see and this means to flow because at that time it was used as a flux okay so it was called fluoride now we will begin with the mechanism of action so before we can know about the mechanism of action we need to first know a little bit about the enamel structure because the fluoride is very much associated with the tooth enamel because it has anti ketogenic properties so first of all let us see how are enamel so enamel as you must have studied has inorganic and organic portion and we have 96 percent of inorganic portion and we have 4% of organic portion. So this inorganic portion, it is crystalline calcium phosphate which is substituted with carbonate ion and it is also found in bone dentine cementum. So these crystals, they are arranged in a rod-like structure. So let us suppose this is the rod-like structure and it will have hydroxyl ions. So we have hydroxyl ions and why am I drawing two small circles together? It is because hydroxyl is hydrogen and oxygen. So let us suppose this right here, it is the oxygen and this right here, it is the hydrogen. So we have many such rods and these are enamel rods. And as the teeth matures, this thickness of rod will increase. Okay. So when the thickness increase, they kind of take a shape of prism. That is why it was usually said as enamel prism. But they don't actually have a regular geometry like this. They are actually kind of haphazard. So the term enamel prism is not very accurate. So as you can see in this image, it will have some amount of space in between. Let me show you. So we have some space in between these and we also have many imperfections in this structure so these structural imperfections as well as inclusions such as carbonate and magnesium within the enamel crystal it will increase the acid solubility of the enamel now we know a little bit about the structure of enamel so we'll see the action of fluoride on the enamel so fluoride it can be incorporated pre eruptively so how will it happen we all know that we have a tooth and we have a fluid filled sac which surrounds the developing tooth so this fluoride will enter the enamel through this sac and will be incorporated into the enamel then we have the post eruptive incorporation means after the tooth has erupted into the oral cavity so these crystals will change from carbonated apatite and hydroxypatite to fluoroapatite and fluorohydroxypatite crystal. So these fluoride rich crystals now are less soluble than the original one. Another action of fluoride is in the remineralization of the acid dissolved enamel. The enamel that has been dissolved, it has the capability of remineralizing it. So first of all, let us see how demineralization happens. So we have a tooth here. And since this tooth is in the oral cavity, we also have saliva here, okay? So the minerals of the tooth enamel, they are continuously in exchange with the minerals in the saliva. So a balance is maintained. So in cases when we have the plaque accumulation and the bacteria will act here, so they will produce organic acid. So the pH of this area will drop and this balance will be disrupted. So minerals such as calcium, 
and phosphate they will leave the enamel surface and they will enter the plug fluid so this is called as demineralization so with the help of fluoride we can get it remineralized so when we have fluoride here in the enamel the enamel will be more acid resistant because when fluoride is incorporated here new crystals are formed and they are better crystals this is how we can explain the white spots or the incipient lesions which we see so the white spot they are less reactive to further acid damage than the adjacent unaffected enamel this is because of the same reason that the fluoride got incorporated there made this happen clinically if you see a white spot i cannot show a white spot in a white background but if you see a white spot and that is smooth and shiny it means that it is because of fluoride and it will be better and if it is chalky and you know rough it means that there is absence of fluoride and make sure that you do not probe the white spot too hard because this is a mineral deficient area so the weak layers may break and this can result in cavity formation then another action is that it inhibits demineralization previously we studied that it is causing remineralization the other action is that it is inhibiting demineralization because the crystals which are formed in the presence of fluoride they are better stable as compared to the other ones so it needs stronger acid to demineralize so the challenge for the acid increases that is why it kind of inhibits the demineralization now the question is which region of the tooth incorporates more fluoride and which region of the tooth incorporates less fluoride or is it the same in all the region and the answer is the maximum fluoride concentration is near the incisal edges and as we go towards the cervical region the fluoride concentration will decrease so here there is less fluoride concentration and here we have more fluoride concentration that is why in younger children enamel is much susceptible to demineralization around the neck okay now we will see how the fluoride actually kills the bacteria so it is a play of ph because ph is the main factor which helps the fluoride to kind of kill the bacteria and let us see how so this was our teeth and let us say this is the plaque so in this plaque we will have fluoride as free ions okay and also we have many bacteria let's say these red ones are bacteria so if we zoom in we can suppose this is the bacteria and this is the fluoride ion so this fluoride ion it cannot pass inside the bacteria in its free form so this bacteria is kind of an idiot because he creates condition for himself so that he can die so he is leading to his own death and we'll see how because this bacteria will ferment the carbohydrate and it will produce acid acid so this acid will lead to fall in the ph so when there is fall in ph means there will be hydrogen ions available so this hydrogen it can then combine with the fluorine ion and it can form hydroxy fluoride so it forms hydroxy now this hydroxy fluoride it can enter the cell now once it goes inside the cell it will again dissociate and it will release the fluoride ion inside and this will interfere with the essential enzyme activity therefore it will inhibit the bacterial metabolism and it will also inhibit the plaque formation and thus it will prevent the dental caries So this was about the mechanism of action of fluoride. I hope you found the video helpful. If yes, do let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to share, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.